Hi, I'm Uluwa Tumilara Johnson and you're welcome to my YouTube channel, Love, Light and Laughter. On this channel, I'm all about inspiring you to live and create your best life and that is on period. Okay, first of all, I need to apologize in case you, in case you hear some background noises. They are doing stuff around it. Just, I'm sorry for the background noise. So today we're talking about something very special to me and I'm going to begin by saying that each individual, each and every one of us, we're on different journeys, we're on different paths, okay? And so the first step, I think for anybody should be to find out what my journey is about. Find out what your journey is about. And I'm not saying have all the details that you can write an ebook, I'll be a book about it. No. I'm just saying get the overall theme, get the overall energy. You know, once you dig deep enough to know, okay, this is what it, it seems to be about. This is what it, it seems to revolve around. You know, you don't have to have the, all the details. Once you find out what it seems to revolve around, once you find out what the theme is for you, I need you to go out into the world and own it. Own your own journey, own your own process, own your own knowledge, own your own movement. We're not supposed to be having this conversation if we all felt deserving. This entire conversation is revolving around a collective sense of lack of worthiness. A lot of us do not feel like we're deserving. A lot of us do not feel like we're worthy of living and breathing and sharing our existence with the entire world. And this is because a lot of us know our own flaws more than anybody else in the world. So you're thinking to yourself, how can this imperfection, how can this flaw, how can this flawed person, how can this mess of a human being share herself or share himself with the entire world? How do I share this mess with the world? And I really want to tell you that the mess is beautiful, but I won't because it's cliche. What I am going to tell you is the mess is a part of who you are. The mess is an intricate, the flaws, the imperfection is an intricate and an important part of who you are. So if you're denying your mess, if you're de denying your imperfections, if you're denying your flaws, then you're denying an intricate and an important part of your existence. The mess is why we try to do better. Our flaws and our imperfections are why we try to do better. It's the entire point of self-development and self-reinvention or self-improvement. So I need you to own every part of your existence, all part of you. I need you to own your your imperfections your flaws i need you to own the good the bad and the in-between own it own every part of your journey own every part of your of your movement and i need you to start by owning your lows we live in a world where we celebrate our eyes and we try to deny or forget the low you know forgetting that the low is the batter with which you make the cake that you now call your eye no lows no eyes it's just how it works and if you don't accept, if you don't recognize that you're currently in a low position, there's no way you're going to go to the eyes. Like not recognizing that you have butter. How are you going to make cake? Now what you need to do is ask yourself that what am I going to do with this butter, this low that I am currently in? How am I going to make something out of it? How am I going to make the best cake ever out of it? I know I'm hungry already. I'm talking about cake too much. <laughs> But seriously, that's how it works. You need to first of all recognize the position that you're in right now because that's the only way you're going to know what next step to take. Another thing that I need you to own is your truth. Whew. Listen, we're all on different journeys, okay? And I need to say this and say this again and again. And nobody, nobody truly knows what you need more than you. While you can get advice, while you can, it's why when you talk to a life coach, a life coach never tells you what to do. A life coach tells you what you think you need to do because you know the answer. You just need somebody to, you know, push it out of you. But that's a conversation for another day. Why am I even getting into that? Listen to me. Nobody knows what you need more than you. So I need you to dig deep. When you find yourself in a low, when you find yourself in a position where you, you just need answers, you need to ask yourself, what do I need right now? But that's not the most important part. The most important part is that when you find out what you need, own it. When you find out what you need, owning something is about accepting something. Sometimes whether it's good or bad, we don't like to accept what we found out. We don't like to accept change. We don't like to accept new knowledge. So when I tell you to own your, or own your truth, I'm telling you to accept what you find. It makes me think about um, a picture. When I said that, it, makes me, it made me see an image of somebody who just dug up something from the ground. And, and she's holding it like this because it's an intricate part. I'm, I have to bring my hand up so that I can see it. She's holding, he or she is holding it like this because it's an intricate part of them. And, and they, they, they don't know what to do with it. It's like, this is what I found about myself. And I, I, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with it. But I, I can't deny it. I know this now. I can't unsee it. But that's the problem. A lot of us see the truth about ourselves. And we're constantly fighting to unsee it. 
Did you get that? I need you to not try to unsee the truth that you've already seen. So you need to find out your truth. You need to ask yourself, what do I believe? What do I need? What do I, what do I need? What is my truth? What are my beliefs? And when you find that out, no matter how scary, because what is fear but a self-created illusion trying to keep you small. Did you get that? <laughs> when you find that out, I need you to own it. No matter how scary, no matter how hard it might be. I need you to accept this about yourself because without acceptance, there's no forward movement. Acceptance always comes before deliverance. Always. Resistance only brings more pain. I think I say this in almost every video I make. But that's the truth. Release, resistance only brings more pain. So you gotta accept it. And then from there you know how to move forward. So let's talk about owning your space. I'm just breaking down everything I mean when I said own it. Because my entire message for you in this video is to own it. Own your space. Own your truth. Own your laws. Own your beliefs. Own your space. Because you already feel undeserving. Because you already feel unworthy. When somebody compliments you or when somebody thanks you for doing them a favor for sharing yourself with them guess what your response is it's nothing it's not all that it's, there's no worries it's, it's fine trying to belittle yourself trying to say if you saw all the flaws that i see you would not be saying thank you to me i'm not, I'm not a big deal putting all that self-doubt into the world and people see that they can take advantage of you people see that you do not know your worth own your worth when I say <laughs> everything that I'm saying, all the own it, just own it. Just keep owning all the things that I'm saying. Own your worth. Don't you ever belittle your intelligence and your brilliance and your uniqueness. When somebody says thank you to you, your response is you are welcome. It's not pride, it's self-respect. It's saying I see that I am beautiful. I see that I am amazing. And it's, it's pretty nice that you see it too. Own it. Own your space and own your thank yous. Own your compliments because you're deserving of it. You're worthy of it. Your, your flaws don't make you less. Your flaws are just part of things that make you you. Don't let the world deceive you into thinking you have to be perfect for you to be deserving or worthy. You, just, you are deserving just as you are. In this very moment that I'm speaking with you, you are deserving on, on your worst days. You're worthy on your worst days because... Because those lows, those experiences, those flaws, those mistakes are the things... Oh, I, I'm going into mistake already. <laughs> those mistakes are the things that made you experience all the experiences that you have and made you as wise or as knowledgeable or made you who you are right now. So own it. And finally, I need you to own your nose. Yes. I need you to own the nose that you receive and own the nose that you give. This is a whole topic of its own, but I'll give you the gist. The way you're going to be able to do that is by recognizing that your life is yours and their life is theirs. If a person says no to you, it's because they believe they are doing what is best for them. And when you say no to a person, it should be because of the same very reason. Doing what is best for you. I'll give you something that will help you understand it better. If you're not qualified for a job, and an employer employs you because they don't want to hurt your feelings. They'd be hurting themselves and their company. They'll be hurting their own goals and aspirations, right? But yes, you don't want to get hurt. You want to actually get the job because you're thinking about what is best for you. What is best for your own dreams, your own aspirations, your own movement, your own journey. Which means that you're not thinking about the other employer, which means you're being selfish. And you're not thinking about the employer because by giving you the job, you'll be hurting him or she and whatever business and dreams and aspirations that they have. What I'm unveiling to you is that the entire dynamic of resisting no is born out of individual and collective selfishness. Each man is thinking of what is best for them. So if, you're, if what is best for me is to get a yes for you, from you, I'm going to fight for my yes. And if what is best for me is to say a no to you, I'm going to fight for what is best for me. Does that make any sense? You're selfish for wanting to get the job at the expense of your employer. And the employer is selfish for wanting to employ a more capable person at the expense of your feelings and how that is going to hurt you. But when you get no, you better recognize that you're getting the no because the person is trying to choose what is best for them. 
and when you give no, and someone is resisting your no, you better recognize that you're trying to do what is best for you, and the person is only resisting it because it is not what is best for them. Both of you, both of you are fighting for what is best. Both of you are selfish. So who, whose selfishness is going to win? That is it. That is the entire dynamic of no. Wow, this is one dope video. Please share it with somebody. Don't hurt this knowledge, okay? Give it a thumbs up because that way YouTube sees that the video is good enough to put out there for other people to see so that other people can just, you know, soak up this knowledge that you've just soaked up. Um, subscribe to my channel because I post new videos every Thursday. And until next time, I'm sending you love, light, and laughter. Peace.